I actually watched two films. I watched Budget Armistani and then I watched Star Wars. One of those was good, one of those I felt not so good. One was powerful, exciting, had incredible cinematography, was technically brilliant, and had stunning performances all the way throughout that kept me gripped to the story. The other one was Star Wars. Bajir Amistani, like, I don't want to do this like a normal review, right? We're not going to break this down into sections. The opening 15 minutes of any movie is usually really, really important, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I get either, either I'm all in, or I'm waiting and I'm waiting, and sooner or later I lose my patience. Yeah. This had probably one of the best opening 15 minutes of this year. It was stunning. It was like, there was this moment, basically, where... He was clearly building up to introduce Ranveer Singh's character, right, Bajadal, mm. right? And you had this courtroom situation where they were looking for the next Peshwa, the next Prime Minister of the Marathi Empire. And you remember wrestling? Yeah, yeah, of course. Right? When you get like an interference and the music goes yeah, and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like that. It was that pumped. I had goosebumps. I was like, ah! It was so sick. It, it, was, really? it was amazing. It was the best 15 minutes I've, I've, I've seen. It was it's such a buzz. Dude, are we saying the best, one of the best opening? Yeah, are we talking about this year? Yeah, yeah. Are we you, taking about American film? All films. Of all films. Wow. This is no Bollywood about this. This is a review considering all of cinema. So, you, you had this, this film, the story is very simple, I think everyone knows the story, yeah. it's based on a true story mm -hmm. and Sanjay Lila Bansali, he, he basically is renowned for using historians, mm -hmm. so he uses really, really you know, highly regarded historians. So this story was supposed to be as close to his true story as possible with a few dramatic moments, right? And one of the most important things with any film where it's location based, it's history based, is how it looks and feels and does it make you believe that this is how it could have been. Yeah. The production design and the art direction in this movie is the best of this year. Fuck man. It's, it's the really? best of this. The production design and the art direction is the best of this year. And it, it does this brilliant job at the beginning of blending animated graphics and pencil work and then blending that into the live action and then back again. And it just really captivates the whole era. There's this beautiful moment right at the beginning where the British Empire are coming in and it's all drawn in pencil. Yeah. And then it turns into like, like computer graphics to, sh to show the fight and then it goes back into pencil. It's just clever, creative use of technology. And the production design throughout is stunning. The cinematography is stunning and the technical aspects of this film are unquestionable. There is no moment where you think that was fake, that was CGI, that wasn't real. Really? It looks throughout. It looks better than 300. It looks better than a lot of films that you would regard as very, very high production value. And Cinematically, with, to what we've seen in the trailers, um, it, to, when I saw it, I, I was a bit, well, you know, is it going to carry on with this style all the way through or are we going to be thrown out by, by the CGI? So it's interesting you say that. So again, going back to the first 15, 20 minutes, right, it basically takes you on this journey right here is a powerful man, Bajaral, and here's what he can do, entering his first battle. And there's this pacing about it, it's really quick and really snappy, like a really good song. Yeah. It's just like hitting this beat, hits his note. No single scene lasts too long, no shot is poorly edited, and it's so well composed that you're in this rhythm really fast. And it's important in films to get into a rhythm because it takes you on an emotional journey. Yeah, yeah. And Bajar Amistani does this so well, and I was waiting for it to fail. I was waiting for a scene where it messes it up, and it didn't. The editing in this film, the, the, the cinematography and the directing of the performances, especially, is unquestionably probably the best I've seen from India this year, certainly this year. Um, and I just thought, I thought it was stunning, it was effortless, it was, so, it was like a great song, right, where you're just singing it and it just, no, no effort Well, well let's, let's just jump into performance, man. I mean, like, this is, that's a pretty bold statement. Although we've already started body pools for like six months, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, as far as the, the, the technical aspects of this film, it goes up against anything. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't matter. This had a $22 million budget, yeah. so it had a significant budget. Um, but it just it goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with anything. And I'm afraid to say it's it's better looking than Bahubali, right? Like, and 
the first battle with Batman Bahubali. And that, as you say, about performances. So Ron Vissing is the star of this show. And my God, is he the star of this show. Because nobody knows what Bajaral was like in real life, but if it was anything like him, he was one of the coolest men in history because he's strong, he's intelligent, he's wise, but he's a badass on the battlefield. And the incredible thing about all of this, he's not just moving, there's emotion in his eyes. There's this, there's this song, Victory Dance, that they do. Now I'll get to the music in a bit, it's not about that, but the Victory Dance they do. And I was, I swear this doesn't happen, I was mesmerized because of his face. Not yeah. because of, he was into it, like he was into it, and it was it was brilliant. And he's like that through the entire film. And he goes through a range of emotions, right? He goes from super powerful dominant to a man that's breaking to a man that's being betrayed to just everything you can imagine. And he does a brilliant job. I don't know what the other reviews are saying, but he is brilliant in this. What about? I mean, you know, you're huge uh, Deepika fan, and yeah. you're huge uh, Bianca Chopra fan. Um, and, and like draw me into the man because I'm seriously Sorry. captivated about how they played off of Bajoral. So, and this is this is the wonderful thing, right? So you've got Priyanka Chopra who plays Bajoral's wife, his Hindu wife, chosen by the community, chosen by the empire as the ideal Hindu wife. She stays at home, she cooks, she pines for him, she worships him, she loves him. It's just like, it sounds like the wife that we would like to find in our lives. We would accept, and this is the interesting thing, this is, this is why the relationships are so good. So she does all of that, and in the very first act of this movie, she has to play this really nice, happy-go-lucky wife, right? But obviously at the same time, we know, because we're the audience, that Bajarao is falling for Dipika, who's playing this strong, powerful warrior woman who is philosophically much, much closer to how Bajarao is. So she's Bajarao's like heart, right? She represents it and she does it in this stoic, strong, focused, almost godlike. She is very goddess like, Dipika, in this whole thing. And she, she just carries it brilliantly. When you think about the more domestic, grounded characters that she's played, and she does this, it's stunning. But the contrast between the two of them, and you see this, this incredible journey where when Ranbir Singh starts to slowly get drawn to Dipika more and more, Priyanka Chopra becomes bitter and she becomes cold and she becomes calculated, but her values are that of the girl at the beginning. So she doesn't, she never gets spiteful, but she has to, she has to then become a complex character and she does it. I was stunned. I did not think she could do it. Dipika, I just bravo, absolute bravo. And what you have is two sides to one man and it's it, from an acting standpoint whether they were directed that way if so Sanjay Bansali fucking amazing or they chose and they formulated this but as a trio there's a scene where the three of them are together and you just see everything in one try it's, it's incredible the supporting cast is great there is there are no flaws but the performances and the acting it's it's pretty much flawless. It's pretty much flawless. And in fact, this is the one where I will go back and I'll watch this again and again to be reminded of just how good the three of them are. Because this this is Ranveer Singh. It's, I'm, I'm, out of all the films I've seen, this is him as best. Uh, it is. And Deepika was amazing in it. She really was. To what I've heard about the song, the soundtracks, I'm, I haven't been a fan, but it's something that I need to go back to again and check them out. How were, I want to know, man, like, what were the soundtracks like in the film and how many were there roughly? So this is the great thing. There were no songs for song's sake. So the songs aren't great, that's the weak point. The songs are actually fairly forgettable. But if you watch the songs in the context of the film, they're wow. pretty good because the songs are, for example, uh, if they go off and win a battle, the victory dance, right? When it's uh, an a piece of entertainment like a dance show for the Peshwa, yeah. then you get a song. You don't just get a song because they love each other. You don't just get a song for any reason other than it's meant to fit within the narrative. And that means it doesn't break you up when you're sure. watching it. And it does such a great job of that. Now, there, there's the background music, on the other hand, is, is awesome. The assassination attempt is backed by this music and I was like my heart was just pumping out of my chest it was like ah 
<laughs> and I swear, like this it sounds like hype, it's got nothing to do with hype, but if you can look at my face if you know anything about you know me, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys have picked up anything, this film for the combination of the technical filmmaking, the performance and the music was stunning. And the and the thing the thing is, the script, right? There isn't really a script because it's all poetry. They all just, it's like a play. They just spend time saying things like, when the sun rises and the wind blows, my heart flutters like dry leaves, right? Okay. But, but it works yeah, because, okay. because you can see in the eyes what that means to each person and that just, that just backs up the, the performance. So, you know, it just falls away and it's, it's just full of these awesome, awesome little moments. I'd love to like get a quote book yeah, just yeah, from yeah. this film. So I want to touch on one more thing, okay. right? It's subtext, yeah? So I'm a big believer, there, there are two forms, well there's multiple forms, but you bring everything together in a film and it should tell you something without you even having to hear it tell you it. And this film uses colours, light, imagery, it uses performance, physicality, it's very physical this film, like there's no moment where anything seems like it's not physical, even there are some moments where there are some sort of hallucinations and bits and pieces, but it feels very physical and it brings all this together to, to tell this, this subtext and it's, every single scene has three or four meanings um, and there was one moment where I smiled because it was the first time I'd heard it said in this way and told in this way. So the big hook that I haven't talked about yet, mm. Priyanka Chopra is Hindu. Yeah. But Jiral is Hindu. Yeah. Deepika is Muslim. Okay. And this is 1700s, yep. right? You cannot be any way associated to a Muslim. So they treat Deepika like she's a whore, like she's a mistress and all these things. And there's this moment. I think you can be associated to Muslims even now. Well, <laughs> there's, this, there's this moment where there's this festival going on and it's in celebration of Priyanka Chopra and Bajaral's marriage and Deepika comes to pay her respects, not to do anything else, she's very honourable, she comes to pay her respects. The entire room is red, it's, you know, reds and blues and yellows. Yeah. And Deepika walks in and she's in green, right? And the mother, and I saw it straight away and I smiled and the mother says, I don't want you here in those colours of that religion. Oh no! Right? But what was powerful was then Deepika came back saying, don't your gods wear green jewels in their yeah. picture. And it was like, perfect comeback. And, and that was the thing about this. This was about, Deepika and Bajarao was about love overcoming religion, overcoming divides, overcoming wars. And then Priyanka and, 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 and Bajarao was about staying home, being safe, and, and all of those other things. Now, I haven't even talked about the fighting or anything like that, right? I'm not going to, I don't have to. The battle scene at the beginning, I'm sorry, it's not as long as Bahubali's, it's not as, you know, grand, but it is so artfully and creatively done, Okay. and it's, it, just, it just had me buzzing. So, if the final act was a touch tighter, this would pretty much be perfect. Ah, okay. It, it, it draws out a little bit, but it is stunning. It's, 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 it's stunning. You know, look, guys, um, I, 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 I kid you not, right? I haven't heard this dude talk about any film this year as much as he's spoken about this. Uh, <laughs> I, hold on, right? If right now, I kid you not, if right now I said, dude, let's go check it out, I haven't seen it. Yeah, I'd happily. You, yeah, happily. Should we go now? I'd happily go now, right now. I love. Gladiator. I love Gladiator. Right, I think Gladiator is one of the best films of all time. I think it's absolutely stunning. Now when I go and watch films, when we go and watch, we take notes and stuff, and when I left, I was in such a daze. I pretty much walked in circles and I wrote this paragraph. It reminds me of Gladiator. Is it going to be poetry, like poetry in the film? No, it's, not, it's not quite that. Could you say it like that? Like, it reminds me of Gladiator. A film I consider to be one of the best of all time. A film I love with a butt. The but is always that I wish I could have changed the true story. Changed it to fit a story that in the film would have been nearly perfect. This is a wonderful, powerful, beautiful story wrapped up in the perfect cover with effortless literary finesse coupled with mesmerizing and captivating imagery, supported by powerful and enigmatic performances. 
This is a film you must all go and watch. Forget every other review you've seen. Don't go to and don't listen to people around you. Go and watch it. Put, just block everything out and just concentrate on the screen. And if you don't love this, I will be forever shocked and forever surprised. This film is stunning and we're doing it very soon, but I'd be interested to see where this ends up on my list of films of the year. Well, because I'm just checking if there's something in your tea, because you've, you've like, you're having an orgasm over this film, right? <laughs> but, okay, look, when this goes, this is long, man. You guys know, when we're passionate about films, we go overboard and we dissect them like mad, right? So, I'm gonna go check this out with you. Yep. I wanna really get a feel for this. Dude, like, any final word? I suppose that is your final summary, that, right? That is it. Well, guys, no hype, no nothing. This film, I was, I was blown away. I did not expect it. I did not expect it at all. And I just think it is, it's wonderfully, wonderfully put together. And I think it is definitely the Christmas film that you should go and watch. Shall we close it now, man? All right, guys, it's your boy Asylum. Peace out. Take care.